All right, guys, live from my studios in Central Texas. This is Rusty78609. And uh, what I'm going to do now, I had a, I always want to reply to comments. And I received a couple of emails regarding, I say I received a few emails uh, related to some videos I have posted or have posted in the past. And uh, one of them, I'll, I'm going to cover two comments in this one video rather than making another video. The first comment was related, of course, to my post about Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like Donald Trump, but obviously there's a lot of people that do. I mean, they're voting for the guy. Uh, he won in Florida and some other states. His delegate count has moved up quite a bit. He's almost to the point now that he'd be really difficult to beat. And it looks like he's going to receive the Republican nomination for president, which, of course, I am for Donald Trump. So I hope he, uh, I hope he gets it. Uh, the, the comment that I received was, you know, what kind of president or, or what kind of president do I, do I think Donald Trump would be? But, you know, that's and that's almost an impossible. I mean, I'm going to be frank with you. Three words. I don't know. OK, that's get that out of the way. Uh, what I hope for, what I hope for, that's a different thing, is that uh, not only will he be able to break the gridlock in Washington and start to level the playing field with these other nations as far as trade goes. I mean, and I understand what it means when these corporations, I, I was a CPA for 20 years, so I understand financial crap. And I understand how these corporations hide money off, offshore in Grand Cayman and overseas in Europe. And, uh, and the reason they don't bring it in because they have to pay taxes on it. And, uh, you know, we got to get that money back. And not only that, we got to get these corporations back. You know, this crap of going overseas uh, and, and uh, going to the place where the labor force is the cheapest. Uh, you know, we have a labor force in the USA, and it's growing, and we don't want them to just be minimum wage earners. We want them to be high-skilled uh, people, and uh, the way we do that is we have to offer high-skilled jobs. How do we do that? Well, you got to get Ford Motor Company, Carrier, Pfizer, and all these other people to uh, realize that it's to their financial benefit to be here in the USA, and there's two ways to do that. One, of course, there's some tax incentives, and then there's a way to kind of get around to the shareholders, because the shareholders always want dividends or dividends are return on investment and that's it I mean, you've got all these mutual funds you got a lot of individuals that have money invested in the market and uh, you know they just want they want to they want to return on their investment which is fine but you know the old uh, uh, adage pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered is too true because it's okay to make a little bit fine make a living but you know come on you, know, you can't, you know, billions and billions, and you know, we've got people approaching uh, trillionaires. You know, that's that's you, know, you got to level the playing field a little bit. How do you do that? Well, you just tax the crap out of dividends. That's how. And uh, you know, you also, in my opinion, uh, instead of lowering the tax on corporations, you're going to have to give those people some other way to some other incentive to stay in this country and that incentive is if you go outside this country we're going to tax the crap out of your products when they come back in and that's the way to do it through tariffs in other words it, you will not be able to sell to the u.s unless you produce it here and i think that's a good start and that's the end of that that's the end of the trump comment i think that covers that pretty good now, the second comment was uh Related to full-time RVing, which I do. I don't pull my RV much anymore. In fact, I haven't in over a couple of years, and I may not pull it again. I'm not sure. I, I go camping in my Prius, which is fine, and that satisfies my camping itch. And uh, But as far as living in an RV full-time, I have no problem with that at all. I've done it for 20-plus years. And uh, for me, I'm single. Uh, I don't have pets or anything like that. And it's wonderful. I mean, I've got a 26-foot RV here, and uh, I've got it's got it's called a bunkhouse model. There's two bunk beds in the back. I've got a queen-size bed over here, even though I took the queen-size bed out because in RVs, the beds that come with the RVs are you know little crappy little things, and I just took it out and I put a twin-size bed on there about this big, a regular good one, and and that's fine for me. 
And, you know, as far as the limited space, it's actually good because for me, it's easy to clean. Uh, I know where everything is because you can almost see everything. There's no place to hide it. And also, it keeps you from acquiring things. Uh, you know, you, you can't go buy a 55-inch TV because if you did, you'd have to sleep outside to watch it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can't do, can't buy or acquire, which is good. And uh, as far as uh, cooking and showering and all the other things, no problem at all. Just like a house. Just exactly like a house. And uh, in the upside, I think, for full-time uh, RVing is that you're flexible in where you can live. In other words, you can go live in an RV park. And some RV parks suck, I'll be frank with you. I've been in hundreds of them. And, uh, you know, and then there's some that are really pretty well maintained and, and the people are okay. They're not loud and you know, they're not disruptive. And uh, you can live a fairly high quality of life in an RV park. As far as traveling in an RV, uh, no problem at all. I mean, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's just a little tiring for me. Uh, and uh, it was fun. I have to tell you, I did enjoy it. You know, I got to see national parks, state parks, you know, different states. And, and, and in the U.S., of course, and, and I enjoyed that. It was fun. And, uh, you know, it's just, um, you know, I'm 70 years old now, and, and I'm fairly settled. I've got things to do. I do these videos. I do wine and beer tastings to keep me busy. So I've kind of built a life away from full, you know, full-time RVing in the sense of pulling the RV. Uh, I, I, I can stay busy uh, just living in the RV and whatever. But anyway, I've got land. I've got... I've got uh, close to, I don't know, half, three-quarter acre here in central Texas, and it backs up to a ranch, and I've got a lot, I've got more privacy here than, than I would if I, in any campsite I could go to, and particularly any RV park, and so I like it here, and I got, I guess you'd say I got lucky, but, but you know, if you plan it and execute it, it's not luck, but some people would say that, and it's nice here, you know, the birds are chirping outside now, it's springtime in central Texas, temperature about 70 degrees, uh, virtually no wind, clear skies, and uh, I just got back from a walk, I've got a great place to go walking, there's little if any traffic on the county road, the county road I walk on, and so full-timing RV for me has been very enjoyable, would I recommend it for everyone? I, I don't know everyone, I would recommend it for people that want a simple lifestyle, you know, I guess you'd call it a minimal, minimalist lifestyle where you're not going to acquire things, you don't want a lot of things, then this is great. Uh, you know, it, it just, it, you, you have, if it's a man and a wife, then you just have to understand you're going to be a lot closer together than you were in your home, and privacy will be virtually uh, unattainable in an RV with two people. With me, of course, I've got it 100% to myself. It's not a problem at all. But, you know, as far as being stationary in an RV and living in one, that's fine. I've got a cover over mine. I've got an 18 by 26 aluminum cover uh, over my RV, and I've got a deck that's uh, 15 feet by 18 feet. And so it's, it's, uh, it's like living in a home. I mean, a regular home, only it's just a small home. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change, I, you know, if I had to live in an apartment in this area, an apartment would cost me, <clears throat> an apartment would cost me in this area, on the low end, 500 a month, on the high end, probably $800 a month, and then you don't have any privacy at all, that's, you know, you're living in a box, you know, you're better off, I'm better off here. Uh, cost of living for me, practically nothing. Uh, I pay 200 a month for my RV. I could have paid it off, but I got a low interest rate, 1.9% financing, so I financed it for 10 years. I've been paying, I'll have it paid off in five. I don't know why I'm doing that. I just am. I just don't like payments. But, you know, when the RV's paid off, let's just assume, I mean, before I bought this, my RV was paid off, and I'll give you an example of what my monthly budget was. My monthly budget uh, without the RV payment, including a car payment and all the other necessary things, the total, the total for the car payment, gasoline, auto insurance, uh, water, electric. You got to pay. I got to pay for water here. Electric. Uh, I don't do trash pickup because I just I, you know, one little bag a week. I just take it to the. I burn all the burnable trash. And then the aluminum cans go to the recycling pl place. The boxes go to the uh, recycling place. So 
I've got a pretty good routine for the trash, so I don't pay for trash pickup. And, uh, you know, cell phone service is, uh, my cell phone service is $35 a month, including all taxes and fees, which is great. It's Cricket Wireless. You might check it out. Uh, it's two and a half gigabytes, unlimited talk and text. Use AT&T Towers, $35, including all taxes and fees. You can't beat it. I promise you, because I'm, I'm the cheapest guy on the planet. As to uh, internet, you, I could use my smartphone and you, you know, use it as a hotspot. If I don't, I go ahead and get me, because I don't have direct TV or dish I just or cable, I, I use the uh, internet for entertainment and streaming videos and different things, because I, I do YouTube a lot. And uh, my Wi-Fi service is through an outfit called RISE, R-I-S-E Broadband. They cover Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and some other states. And it's uh, with taxes and everything, $53 a month. For me, of course, it's unlimited. You know, it's 250 gigabytes per month. I get, I use about 20, 25 gigs a month, so about 10% of the allowance. And uh, the speeds are not that great. The download speed is five megabytes. Well, three and a half to five and everywhere in between, usually around four. Uh, uh, download and upload, maybe one. That's about it, one and a half. So I, I can't upload these HD videos from home. I have to go to a, a little town near where I live, eight miles away, and, and use a Wi-Fi there, which is much quicker. But anyway, the total budget for me, uh, with everything, without an RV payment, uh, runs about, including grocery. My grocery bill runs about 100 a month. I spend about 80 a month on beer and wine. And so we're looking at about 700 a month. That's for everything, living comfortably. And so I can live on my Social Security and, and, and save money, basically. And, uh, and of course, you know, I'm getting older, so I've got medical expenses. I go to a dermatologist once a year. Knock on wood, I don't take any medication. I don't have to go to doctors. My health is so far so good. But uh, I'm preparing for the event that, you know, sooner or later, something may, may stub my toe. You never know. But... As you get older, these things happen. So anyway, I hope I've answered both comments in one video. Again, this is Rusty. Rusty78609 is my channel. Uh, subscribe if you're interested. Uh, do, do YouTube, do I make money by subscriptions? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the only thing subscriptions do is give you a built-in audience. So that you have, like, so let's just say you had 10,000 uh, uh, subscribers, which in 50 years I may have that. But... If you had 10,000 subscribers, that means every time you post a video, there's a good chance 10,000 or so people are going to watch those videos because they subscribed. And so, you know, that gets your view count up. Well, your view count is directly related to the click count, which means somebody clicked on an ad. And if you click on an ad, then there's a, there's a revenue, you pick up a little revenue from that. And it, it but I've kind of looked at it and analyzed it, and it appears that and it, you don't make much. In fact, for me to make, by the time I get a check from YouTube, I'll probably be close to 70. I'm 70 right now. I'll be about 77. So I'm not, I'm not expecting to make money out of this. And uh, you, have to make a, you have to accumulate $100 before they send you anything. So my first check for $100 will be when I'm about 77, about, based on current growth. Uh, it, it figures out to about one-tenth of a cent per view. Okay, so 100,000 views would give you about $100. Okay, that's about how that works, 100,000 views. And, and, and I get about, <clears throat> now my view count's going up because I've been more active the past couple of months. But I get about 120 views a day now. I used to not even get that many a month, okay, or a year. I mean, but I've been active and I've been posting videos and so, and that's how it works. And uh, so, but it's growing a little bit. But it's just a hobby. I mean, it gives me something to do. I mean, I've spent all morning fooling with these videos, talking to you folks, basically. And, and I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. And uh, But anyway, trying to enjoy my life. That's me, Rusty. My channel again, Rusty78609. Big thumbs up to you guys. Enjoy your day. Carpe diem in Latin means seize the day or seize the moment. And uh, then adios amigos. Adios amigos means goodbye friends in Spanish, in case you don't know that. There it is.